Maria Botchkreva was a Russian peasant that was one of many women that fought for the Russian army during the First World War. She created the first all-female combat unit in Russia's military history called the Women's Battalion of Death. Botchkreva's account of her life does not only show how the Russian Revolution crippled their army's war effort, but ultimately depicts the transformation of how women perceived themselves before and after the war. The once docile and inferior female became strong, independent, and vehemently patriotic. Maria Bochkareva was born in Novgorod, Russia in July of 1889. She grew up with her three sisters and their mother and father in Tomsk, Russia. Her family was very poor and they often suffered from hunger. To make matters worse, their father was lazy and a belligerent drunk. He would often beat his daughters and wife for no reason whatsoever. In order to escape her father, Maria got married at the age of 15 to a man named Afanasi. But he was just as cruel as her father, and she was forced to run away from him as well. Soon after she escaped from Afanasi, she married another cruel man named Yasha. However, this man would change her life forever. Near the outbreak of World War I, Yasha attempted to kill Maria twice, and something inside of her finally snapped. She had to get away. It was apparent that before the war, women in Russia had little to no social status whatsoever. They were often beaten, raped, and taken advantage of in many other ways. Women were treated like objects so often that even they themselves were accustomed to it. Maria Bochkareva would have no more. She would prove herself to men all over the world that she was equal to them, and she would gain the independence she deserved. In August 1914, Maria decided that she wanted to go to war for Mother Russia. She traveled back home to Tomsk to enlist in the 25th Reserve Battalion, but she was merely laughed at and sent away by the commander. Women were deemed too weak to be in Russia's great army. Even her own family cursed her for trying to commit such a radical act, for she was going against the deep patriarchal traditions of Russia. However, she decided to write a letter to the Tsar to ask for his consent to enlist, and... In the most blissful moment of Maria's life, she was assigned to the 4th Company and 5th Regiment of Russia's Army. When Maria arrived at the barracks in Tomsk, all of the soldiers looked down at her and cursed at her. She couldn't even go to sleep without some stranger trying to touch her or molest her. Maria knew that if she wanted to be left alone, that she was going to have to gain the respect of her fellow soldiers. So, she came up with a nickname for herself, Yashka and she even went to a brothel with a group of soldiers and seduced a woman, which gave the men much amusement, and they began to respect her more. However, she knew she wouldn't have the soldiers' full respect until they saw her performance in battle. When her regiment first moved to the front at Polotsk, the general wouldn't allow her to go to the front line because he was worried about her well-being, but Yashka, as always, would take no for an answer. She had come this far, and she would fight for Russia. Yashka was deeply patriotic and she wanted nothing more in life than to drive the Germans out of her country. Because she was a woman, her authorities often questioned her patriotism and will to fight. But after they saw her efficiency during drills, they could do nothing but compliment her. While Yashka participated in many major offensives against the Germans, she's primarily known for saving her wounded comrades in no man's land. She simply said, so long as we were alive, we could not remain deaf to the pleadings of our comrades. It is recorded that she saved over 1,000 wounded soldiers from no man's land by the time she left the front in 1917. Throughout her service for the Russian army, she received a second-degree gold cross and a cross of the third degree for saving so many soldiers while being in the line of fire. She was also deemed a senior non-commissioned officer and placed in charge of 70 men. However, she was denied several other recommendations because she was a woman. Yashka ignored the prejudice she faced and continued to loyally serve the Russian army. Unfortunately, soldier morale was running low due to a harsh winter, the brutal battles of post Devian Lux, and several offenses near the Stir River. When the Tsar was overthrown and replaced with the provisional government, the sentiments of insubordination grew stronger and stronger. Order number one proclaimed that all citizens of Russia were equal and that soldiers and officers were equal as well. In light of the creation of a new government and its order, soldiers began to disobey their superiors and many refused to go to the front to fight. On top of that, 
Several parties began to compete for power by giving speeches to soldiers at the front. Some spoke of patriotism and defending the motherland, but the most popular parties spoke of peace and condemned those who wanted to continue to suffer in the war. The soldiers began to lack enthusiasm and even began to fraternize with the Germans. Yashka couldn't take it anymore. She had to leave the front and figure out a way to save her mother Russia. When Yashka left the front, she traveled to Petrograd to meet with Alexander Kerensky. Along the way, she saw Bolsheviks protesting soldiers that were headed towards the front. It was the first time that she had ever seen a Bolshevik, and it was May of 1917. When Yashka met with Kerensky, she proposed a rather radical idea to form a disciplined all-female battalion so that they could shame the men at the front into fighting. To much surprise, on May 21st, 1917, Kerensky and several other generals approved the idea on the spot and expressed their support. This was a great step for women all over the world, and it can be seen as the modern introduction to women as soldiers. Once news spread of the all-female battalion, more women in Russia and other countries began to volunteer themselves for the war effort. Before World War I, women were expected to have little to no part in war. War was traditionally just for men, but war at the time was changing. To the women, it was not just about raising soldier morale. It was about raising their own status. It was about proving their equality to men. It was about embracing their country's patriotism. At first, Yashka received 2,000 recruits from all walks of life, but she was a strong disciplinarian and sent many women home. She knew that the men at the front would never take them seriously if they didn't behave properly, and this she knew from experience. All of the women's hair was cut short, they weren't allowed to giggle, laugh, or flirt, and they had to wear men's uniforms. She was hard on the women and the training was not easy, but they slowly progressed into a well-organized force of 300 individuals. In Petrograd on June 21st, 1917, these 300 women were consecrated into the official women's battalion of death. The battalion was rather efficient and Yashka captured the admiration of authorities in the army and she was also promoted to captain while under command of the battalion. It is odd, however, that no matter how much power or status these women gained, they were never treated any better by men, and no one celebrated the improved gender roles but the women themselves. Once on the front, her soldiers were constantly molested and treated badly. Most of the men at the front sympathized with the Bolsheviks and their promise of peace. They were fed up with war, and there was basically a virtual truce between the Russians and the Germans, but the women kept on fighting. In fact, they were the only battalion that continued to fight when no other regiment was. The women didn't care how they were treated or how people saw them because they discovered new abilities within themselves. They could do things now that they had never done before. They left their homes independently, they were enlisted as soldiers, they stood besides men in battle as their equals, and no one could take this new feeling from them. Eventually, the Bolsheviks would prevail in overthrowing the provisional government, which meant the destruction of Yashka's battalion and Russia's war effort as a whole with the Treaty of brest She was arrested and given an appearance with Vladimir Lenin and Leon Trotsky. She courageously told them that their plan for Russia would never work and that they would be responsible for the turmoil of Russia. She was forced to go into hiding and was later arrested by the Bolsheviks. They forced her to watch the execution of her comrades near a mass grave filled with hundreds of dead bodies. After she was released, Yashka went home to see that communism was in full effect. People were starving, they couldn't find work, and they were dealt very meager rations. Yashka's heart was broken. All communism had brought Russia was starvation, civil war, and disease, not equality or liberty. She had to do something for her country. With the help of the American consul, Yashka escaped to the United States, where she pleaded with the Allied power to help her bleeding country. Although Yashka felt great sadness about the state of her country, one can ignore the role she had in progressing the status of women. Although her main goal was to save her country, Yashka also saw the battalion as the representative of females all over the world. Her participation in battle not only put a foot in the door to increase women's rights,
but it was also proof that women could be independent, strong, and patriotic, just like soldiers, and more importantly, just like men.